Hey everybody, uh, we're going to start taking a look at naming inorganic compounds and we're going to start by naming binary ionic compounds because the ionic compounds follow a few different rules and if I give them to you all at once it can get to be pretty overwhelming. So we're going to start with these binary ones. Uh, just for a review, you need to go think back to the last chapter. It hasn't been that long, but what is an ion? Okay, Think about what an ion is and how can we tell ion charges from the periodic table because you're going to be using that a lot. I'm not going to give you the answers to these because you sure already know them. Uh, so we're going to be looking at binary. Let me zoom out again real quick. We've got four different things we're going to be looking at. But when we're looking at binary compounds, the word binary means we're made of two parts. So a binary ionic compound is simply, or compounds, these are uh, compounds made or consisting of two single ions. Okay, one is a cation. Okay, remember the cation is the positive ion, and I'll do this next part in red, and the other is the anion. Okay, so we're looking at a single positive and negative part or ion sticking together to form this compound. So when you're when we're given these these compounds and we need to write the name for, for them, the cations retain their name. So we're going to start with a very simple ionic compound. We're going to start with NaCl, and we're going to be coming back to this. So I'm going to put this in a box because I'm going to refer back to it. But when we're naming these, the cation retains its name. And so before we can look at this, the first thing you need to know is that the cation always comes first. Or if you didn't know that and you're looking at your periodic table here, remember from, uh, let's see, the last chapter, okay, we're going to be ignoring, oops, sorry about that. We're going to be ignoring these, these middle transition metals for now. That's going to be the next podcast actually, but if we wanted to assign the charges, they're equal to the group number for the metals. So this is going to be a 1 plus, this is a 2 plus, and then the uh, boron is a 3 plus, carbon would be a 4 plus, and then we switch to the anions right here, and this would be a 3 negative, 2 negative, 1 negative, and then these are neutral. So when you're looking at the periodic table, know where your cations and your anions are. Okay, so I'll draw this line in here again for us. Kind of zigzags down, following the metalloids right around there. So the cation in this case is the sodium. Okay, right here we have sodium number 11 in the plus one, uh, the plus one group on the periodic table. And so the cation retains its name. Uh, so if we're just naming it, if I gave you Na on its own, we would obviously call it sodium. If I were to give you an Na plus one charge or a one plus charge, it is still called sodium. And it doesn't matter what ion it is. So if I were to give you, I don't know, let's pick another cation here. Move this over a little bit. Uh, let's, I don't know, for the sake of argument, calcium is Ca. We would call it calcium. But if I were to change it to its ionic form, this is still a and calcium is a 2 plus because calcium is in group 2 right here. If I were to give it a 2 plus, it is still called calcium. So very, very simple. So this compound is a sodium something. Okay. The second part of this naming scheme or the naming rules is that the anion or the negative ion takes the IDE suffix. So again, looking over here, all the anions are in red, except for group 8. We're not paying attention to these, but all of these non-metals right here are anions. Okay, We have a negative 3, a negative 2, and a negative 1 charge. Uh, looking back at our compound, at our example, we have Cl, which is chlorine. And chlorine is right here, number 17 on the periodic table. So I'm starting with a chlorine atom. Okay, but as soon as I change it to a Cl minus ion, it calls it or it becomes named the chloride. I'm having trouble speaking today. It is now a chloride ion. It takes this IDE suffix. Um, another example would let's say uh, oxygen. Okay, just a regular O is oxygen. But as soon as it ionizes, an oxygen is in group 6, so it has a 2 negative charge. So as soon as we give it that ion, it becomes an oxide ion. 
So back to our example up here, we have sodium and then a Cl. Well, this is the anion. I'll do this in red. So this is called sodium chloride. Okay, this denotes that it's the anion. So again, this is the anion. And in black, the sodium is the cation. Okay, so pretty simple. The third thing, when we are writing a formula from the name, the formula must have a net charge of zero. Uh, so let me give you a quick example here. Um, let's say we're doing, uh, we'll keep sodium, we'll do sodium oxide this time. Okay, sodium oxide. So again, the, the first part of the name here is the sodium, and this is Na. And we know that sodium has a plus one charge from the periodic table. It's in group one. The oxide comes from oxygen, so we have an O, but when we're looking at the periodic table, oxygen falls into this two negative charge right here, okay? That's its ion. It cannot become anything other than a, a minus two ion. So if I were to stick these together in a ratio of one sodium to one oxygen, right, if I just wrote it NaO, I would still have a net charge plus one minus two of a negative one. Ionic compounds cannot have a charge. They have to be electrically neutral. So this is not any good. We cannot do that. So when you're writing these compounds, we have to look at the total charge that, that we need to make together. So if I have a sodium that is a plus one and I have an oxygen that is a negative two, just looking at this, I need a ratio of two sodium to one oxygen, so my ionic compound would be Na2O. And so now I have an electrically neutral compound. Uh, let me get some more space down here. I haven't finished typing up the notes yet, that's why you see this, but there will be more practice here. Uh, so find some blank space, but ultimately what you're gonna be doing, so let me give you another example. Let's do magnesium chloride. Okay, so magnesium on your periodic table is right here. So Mg is a two plus ion. So I have a magnesium two plus, and a chloride comes from chlorine right here, which is a negative one anion. So we have Cl negative. Now look at this, if you write your ion charges, I call this the flip and switch, I don't know if there's other names for it, but if you take your ion charges, I'll do this in blue so we can track what's happening. Right now I've got a two to one ratio. I can take my magnesium ion and put the subscript down here on the bottom and the chlorine ion and becomes a subscript of the magnesium. So what we end up with is we have a magnesium with a the chlorine charge of one, so magnesium on its own, and then the chlorine takes the number from the charge of the magnesium and it becomes Cl2. So just looking at these ion charges and moving them to the subscript position for the opposite ion will give you the correct formula every time. Okay, so uh, there will be more practice for you, but that's it really in a nutshell, and I will post these notes on the, on the website, um, everything I just annotated on it, so if you missed something, you can go back and look at it. But I would say out of all of this, you really have to pay attention to making sure these compounds are a net charge of zero. So get some practice with this, uh, and I will be giving you more practice in class, but be sure to ask questions if you have them.